I hope that the, you know, glare in my glasses is not too distracting. I don't, a broke bitch cannot afford that no glare uh, lens. So we're just gonna uh, get into the video. Um, basically, a lot of you guys have been asking me to make more USC related videos. And by a lot of you, I mean two people, literally. But you know what? I'm going to freaking do it. And um, I thought that today I would talk about what it's like being pre-med at USC. And what being pre-med means is basically you're taking these classes on a specific pre-med track that prepares you uh, to have all of the required courses to apply for med school. So what that basically entails at USC is taking general bio, general chemistry your freshman year, sophomore year you'll be taking organic chemistry and more biology classes, and then your junior year you're taking um, things like molecular bio, genetics, physics, and then senior year you're mostly doing upper division lab electives and research. Okay, so that's what it means at USC, at least. And I just finished my freshman year at USC, so I was taking General Bio, which is Bio 120 and 220 for fall and spring semester, and then I was taking Chem 105A and B, along with other various, like, GE classes. So, I wanted to talk about my experience with those classes, how I felt about them, and if you're planning on being pre-med at USC, what you can expect. So, if you're planning on being pre-med at USC, you will definitely be taking Bio 120 in the fall alongside Chem 105A. Both of those classes are a lot on their own, so taking them together is going to be initially very overwhelming, especially since you just got to college, you're still transitioning from high school, but what to expect for Bio 120, this is a lot of what I thought was covered in APES, AP Environmental Science in high school. It's, it's a lot to do with ecology and evolution, so I found the first semester of biology to be infinitely easier than the spring semester. Just because it was mostly memorization, you know, it's just what are all of the names of these starfish or mollusks and like you can just sit down and memorize them flashcards all of that it's 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 simple enough but spring semester bio which is bio 220 is so much more comprehensive you really have to understand the lecture material and the concepts in order to do well on the exams but the good thing is is that that class is so much more interesting because you're actually learning things about medicine and diseases, you're learning about why do people have heart attacks, um, what is the purpose of this organ, uh, what is, how does this hormone get released, things like that that are actually relevant and interesting if you are on the pre-med track and planning on being a doctor. So although it's a lot harder, it is more fun, for sure, and everybody feels that way about it. Um, as for chemistry, Chemistry 105A is what you'll be taking fall semester, right when you get to USC. That class is a bitch. There's just so much work involved in the class. Like, both bio and chemistry have labs, which are about an hour to two hours long, once a week. And for chemistry, you have to do an entire pre-lab, which is writing out the entire method of what you'll be doing in lab, the entire procedure, um, a chemical safety table, like you'll you'll learn all of that once you get into the course, they'll tell you about it, but it takes like an hour to an hour and a half to do that pre-lab and then after that you have to do a lab report which is what you learn from the lab and like your data and what your data means, if it was accurate, and that takes hella long. Honestly, I've spent close to four hours doing a post lab. That's what a lab report is called a post lab in Chem 105A. Um, 
and it's a bitch. I just hated it. I hated chem both semesters. Disgusting. But it's really crucial that you have a good lab partner. So on the first day, make sure you find someone who looks competent and who looks smart because they're going to be the one you're doing all the experiments with and once you finish the experiments you can just leave and that's really nice if you don't have to be there the entire three hour period so find somebody who looks smart and somebody who you could hit up while you're doing the post lab and be like hey is this what you got for this calculation on our data like someone who you can do that with that's super super helpful so as for bio and chem exams they're First semester, they're pretty straightforward. The first chemistry midterm is the easiest one because that first chem midterm is mostly basic like dimensional analysis, like how many molecules are in four moles of this, um, that kind of stuff. And that midterm compared to the ones following it, it was so much easier. So if you do well on that one, you can be pretty confident that you've that you're studying correctly and that you're going to do well on the other midterms as long as you keep up your study habits um, because the following exams just get so much harder like without warning just so much worse <laughs> and um, as for bio it's like a my professor I had professor Edmonds and the way she did her exams was a multiple choice section and a free response and both of those it was it was honestly all right like free response would be a little tricky just because if there was one thing you didn't study and that was the one thing on the free response then you're kind of screwed but her exams as long as they as long as you went to lecture or as long as you're keeping up with the lecture slides you're going to be prepared for the exam and they also have exam reviews before all midterms and finals so that's also super helpful if you go to those. They're led by students, like upperclassmen, I think. So they're really helpful because they explain it in a way that um, sometimes professors don't know how to explain. And then second semester bio and chem exams. Second semester of bio, as I said, is much, much harder. And so the exams were 100% multiple choice, but it's the kind of multiple choice where you literally just sometimes you'll just look at the question and be like wow I have actually no idea but there is a curve in both classes so as long as you're at the average as long as you try and stay above the curve then you should be fine you should pull off at least a B minus that way um, and then for chem um, honestly if you've taken AP chemistry in high school Chem 105A and Chem 105B are literally the same curriculum as AP Chemistry. So if you are solid on AP Chem, you got like a 4 or 5 on the exam, you'll do fine. You'll do fine in Chem 105A and B. That's another thing, like, I got a 5 on the AP Bio exam, but it doesn't matter. I can't use that 5 if I'm going to be pre-med because med schools our med schools have a certain list of requirements and you need to have taken like bio in college not like gotten out of it using AP scores so it doesn't really matter what your AP scores were on bio or chem you're still gonna have to take them even with uh, calculus I'm pretty sure like you still need to take calculus at school at college um, and on a less academically geared note, I'm going to talk about what you should expect uh, emotionally being pre-med at USC. And that is mostly just wanting to die and suffering. A lot, a lot of suffering. <laughs> mostly, I don't, I mean, this is purely my experience of being pre-med. I really felt inadequate and like inferior to everybody else in my major, everybody else who was pre-med, just because I thought that science was my thing, I was like, I'm good at bio, I'm like okay at chem, and then going into a school where everybody was good at it as well was sort of like, 
I'm not as good as I thought I was and it was sort of like I had to check myself and be like um, and be like I'm not gonna always be the overachieving best at everything student like I was in my small high school so and I also realized that I didn't have the same passion for medicine and like ambition to go to med school as a lot of other kids did like you really need to have a love and passion and drive to go to med school if you're going to be pre-med otherwise you're going to be doing these four hour long lab reports and just be like why am I doing this I don't even really want to go to med school that bad but kids who kids who have that passion to be a doctor will be able to tell themselves like this is worth it because I'm working towards something I really really want like I'm working towards my dream yeah so if if you are planning to do pre-med I would recommend doing it for sure like go into it first semester but make sure you're like reflecting and asking yourself if this is something you really want because if not you're not gonna make it in med school or in college against all of these people who want it more than you if that makes sense and as for having a social life while you're pre-med definitely you need to have a good balance because it's just a fact that if you're taking bio and chem and you're pre-med you're gonna have a much heavier workload than most especially if you're going to USC where there's always things going on there's always a party on the weekend um, there's always events in your dorm happening it's really important that you try and make friends with people who are sort of in the same boat as you like my roommate was also a bio major so it didn't feel like I was like so bogged down with work because like well you know I'm in this together with all the other people who are struggling and so it's definitely easier to manage if you're friends with people who are also pre-med, also bio, also STEM so that's a good tip for not feeling like you're dying all the time or having somebody else to die with if you're planning on being pre-med at USC, I'll just talk a little bit about what your schedule will be like. Most pre-med kids will take bio and chem alongside each other. There is an option to take chem later on, but you normally don't do that if you're going to be pre-med because it just sets you back and you'll probably have to take a gap year. So you'll be able to choose your bio lecture to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday. The Tuesday, Thursday sections are longer or over an hour and Monday, Wednesday, and Friday are only 50 minutes. I would definitely recommend taking bio Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for 50 minutes as opposed to like an hour and a half on Tuesday and Thursday just because I personally would get so bored in a long lecture like that that I would just stop listening and I would stop taking notes and it would be exhausting and I would like not learn half of the material. I think that's like the more common option as well for fall freshmen. And beware for Dr. Skype, Miss Skype. I actually don't know if I don't know what her official title is. Everybody just calls her Skybo. She's the lab director for Chem 105 A and B, and you're gonna have to you're gonna have to encounter her at some point um, in Chem if you're pre med, but. Watch out for that lady, she's scary. She literally has like a 1.5 on Rate My Professor. Anyway, yeah, those are sort of all my tips, or not tips really, just what it's like to be pre-med at USC. If you have any other questions, I will surely answer them in the comments section. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this little vid. It was sort of just spur of the moment and I know it's kind of weird lighting, it's literally 12.30am, um, AM, so not much sunlight happening right now, but hopefully this was fine and you guys learned something, and uh, yeah, good luck if you plan on doing pre-med at USC, and thanks for watching! Bye!